Hey guys, we're going to finish chapter 15, which is reconstruction. The next major task for politicians was to try to figure out how to improve the southern economy. There was disagreement over how to do this. Some politicians wanted the southern economy to continue to be based on agriculture with its cash crop being cotton. Other politicians wanted the southern economy to reflect that of the northern economy and become more of an industrial economy. So some politicians argue that plantations from the south were considered forfeited estate and as such those plantations could be broken into small farms to be given to former slaves but many politicians were against this idea so they were they did not give land to blacks from these plantations now here's the hypocrisy of congressmen though as people started moving west because of the homestead act of 1862 while Congress refused to give land to freedmen, they were willing to take Native American land in the West and grant it to white settlers. So we continue to see this difference of racial inequality in this particular case has to do with land and it becomes a major issue. African Americans were not asking to be given money. African Americans, they've been working all their lives, so they asked for becoming as 40 acres in a mule. 40 acres refers to land. African Americans wanted their own piece of land. And a mule is a tool, or in this particular case, the animal used to work that land. So African Americans were not asking for some form of free money. They wanted to work their land. They wanted to provide for themselves. But Congress refused to give them that land. And this is the argument of Congress. They said that whoever owned the land in title was the owner of that property while well, for the longest slaves had been laboring the land but labor does not equal ownership of land and so the fact that whites had the title though blacks did the labor according to congress the title means that they are the owners so without land african americans and poor whites in the south were left poor and vulnerable to the white oligarchy that came to be after reconstruction now, African Americans were able to work and labor for wages, but during slavery, the white masters gave their slaves food, clothing, and shelter. Now, after, after the Civil War, African Americans used their wages, whatever they earned from working for whites, to buy their own food, clothing, and shelter. And a lot of times, they were working for their ex-slave master, and they were buying all these provisions from their ex-slave master or somebody dear to them. This is what becomes known as sharecropper. So sharecropper, I'm going to explain the cycle of sharecropping and the cycle of po uh, poverty. So this is particular is a freedman or it could be a poor white. Now he becomes known as a sharecropper because he doesn't have land of his own. We already mentioned that Congress refused to give poor whites and freedmen land. So in order for freedmen and white, poor whites to be able to provide for themselves, they went to their ex-slave master usually, and they asked their, their ex-slave master if they could work the land. Now being freed and being poor, the sharecropper had no land and no seed. So in essence, the ex-slave master, the owner of the land, allowed the sharecropper to use the land in his seed to work it. In exchange, the sharecropper needed to give half of his crops to the ex-slave master. Now, that was just one, land and seed. However, poor whites and sharecroppers also needed food and clothing. And usually, they got that food and clothing from, again, their ex-slave master, or somebody who was dear to him. And this was based on credit. So you're saying, let me borrow $100 worth of clothing and $100 worth of food, for example. So right at the top, he's in debt $200 plus half of the crops that he needs to give to the ex-slave master, the landowner. So he needs to get to work. And that's what he does. So in this particular case, the sharecropper plants and harvests crops. And this crop has to do is cotton. Once he gets all that crop, 
he now gives it, we go to step four, and he gives half of his crops to the landowner, the ex-slave master. The landowner goes and sells those crops, and from whatever money he gets, he needs to take the cut that the old sharecropper owned. So we just say that it was $200, right? So if the kind that he sold does not sum up to $200, then the sharecropper is still in debt to the land owner. And as such, he's now in debt, whatever the difference is from the $200 plus whatever they got from here, or minus whatever they got, he's in debt to the land owner and the cycle continues, right? So the sharecropper owed $200 and from the cotton he was only able to get $150, then he still owes $50 plus whatever he's gonna land, whatever he's gonna borrow the next year. And it becomes a cycle of poverty. So sharecropping put African Americans and poor whites in this cycle of poverty for many, many, many years. Now things got worse. In 1873, we have an economic depression. It is worldwide and Republicans had wanted to build the Southern economy and based on that Southern economy, they were gonna provide for schools, banks, railroads, and other forms of infrastructure. With the economic depression going down, their party or their plan to rebuild the Southern economy through infrastructure failed. Causes of the depression, railroads went bankrupt. Grant, the president, Ulysses Grant failed to issue more money. Some of the effects, crop prices dipped. Unemployment went up, it's particular for industrial workers. There was obviously less production because people were not working as much. Republicans lost a lot of support and it didn't help that Grant's administration was constantly under attack or they were constantly accused of fraud and scandals. Things like a particular company will pay congressmen a certain amount of money so that that congressman could pass losses to help private businesses profit. Or a private business will pay congressmen money to avoid paying taxes. Or a private company will ask congressmen to give them land in exchange for money. So all these things, unfortunately, were causes of the economic depression. So people started to call for laissez-faire, which is a hands-off approach of businesses by the government. A major effect for African Americans was what we come known as a Freeman Saving Trust Company. Basically, it was a bank for African Americans in particular. That bank went bankrupt. And when it went bankrupt, African Americans lost all their savings and the government refused to refund whatever savings they had put in this bank. In 1876, we had a presidential election. Ruther B. Hayes is a Republican. He is elected president in 1876 because he agreed with Southern Democrats to end Reconstruction. Democrats, Southern, Southern Democrats were tired of Reconstruction. So they actually agreed with a Republican president to vote for Ruther B. Hayes if Ruther B. Hayes promised to get rid of Reconstruction. And he did. When he becomes president, he removes all federal troops from the South, leaving blacks defenseless against white terrorists like the KKK and the White League. So with Ruther B. Hayes coming in as president, Reconstruction officially ends. So what do we learn about Reconstruction? Many people say it didn't accomplish anything. Other people said it was one of the major accomplishments for the U.S. in particular in the South. These are the facts. Ex-Confederate leaders were able to seize power in the South and establish a Southern democracy in the South. Southern Democrats and freedmen were terrorized by ex-Confederate leaders and terror groups that emerged like the KKK and the White League. Now, these group terrorist group members were, um, uh, they were monitored by the federal government. And the federal government passed what became known as the Enforcement Act of 1870 and 1871 to stop terrorist activity. Now, in 1870, the federal government just told the KKK and the White League and any other white terrorist who was um, terrorizing African Americans that they needed to stop this terrorism, otherwise they're gonna be charged with crimes. But there was nobody there to enforce this law. So Congress came back again in 1871 and said, okay, we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna try to enforce this law by jailing or um, 
giving a fee to any white terrorists who were terrorizing African Americans. So that way it was passed twice. Now, Reconstruction failed to provide equality for black between whites and blacks. Republicans lost support in the South in the South for nearly a hundred years. It wouldn't be until the civil rights movement when Republicans started to get a little bit more support in the South. Um, but that has many implications. So this is the legacy of Reconstruction. For good or bad, it's what happened.